This is a video about big end and small end located connecting rods. Um, it's one of the things that comes up occasionally with Ducatis and people often don't understand what I'm talking about when I mention it. So I thought I'd do a video. A uh, big end located connecting rod is what people are most used to seeing. And that's simply a rod that are located on the big end of the crank on these engines that pair. So this is a 400 crank. And you can see two rods here, and the side movement is probably in the region of 0.2 millimeter side clearance, and that's about right for these engines. <clears throat> and so when the piston goes on the rod, we've got a 400 piston here, we put the piston on, and there's a lot of side movement. And that way, the piston can float on the end of the rod and the rod is located by the crank. When they started running the 996 Corsa engines in about 96, they went to what they call a small end located rod. And I believe the reason for it was to reduce piston wear. I think that's what Bruce Myers told me once. Um, and from then on, all the superbike engines used a small end located rod. And by superbike, I mean the, the 996 racing engines did. I think there were some engines where they had, I have seen rods that appear to be a big end located rod, but they're a bit thinner than the normal big end located rods. When they went to small end located rods, and this is a 7, 749 piston here, which is a small end located piston, you can see the piston is machined in this surface here. And... What happens is when the piston goes on the rod, it won't fit on this rod because it's too wide. There's about 0.3 millimeter side movement between the piston and the rod. So the piston is located in the cylinder and the rod is located in the piston groove. And on the big end of the crank here, there's about two millimeters side clearance. And so the rods can just float around. And the first time you pull one apart, you think there's something really wrong with it. But as it turns out, that's how it's meant to be. Now all the production titanium rods are small end located, which started in the 748 SPS of 1998. And then I think the 98 916 SPS is meant to have tyre rods, but I've had at least one of those engines apart and I'm pretty sure it didn't have tyre rods in it. Uh, but certainly 99 onwards, all the 996 SPS has had tyre rods. And then going forward, 748Rs and the 998 9S engines all have tyre rods. And all those engines, as well as all the production 996cc engines, so the 996 ST4S, S4R, all those engines, uh, 749, 999, 848, 1098, 1198, are all small end located. As to what happens if you mix them up, well, you physically can't put a small end located piston onto a big end located rod. Uh, the big end located rods are about 22 mil wide here usually. I think it's 22. And the small end located rods are about 20. So they physically won't go on. Um, and I heard, I was talking to someone the other day who was trying to fit a small end located piston onto a big end located rod after the whole assembly had been balanced. And I found myself in that situation years ago when someone convinced a uh, customer to put tie rods into his engine and uh, I think we got some some rods out of the race team that turned out to be big end located rods and uh, made a mess of the whole thing. Uh, so what happens when you put small end located rods in a big end located engine or big end located pistons? In that instance the rods will have about two millimetre side movement down here, so they can go clonk, 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 clonk. And also, they'll have two or three millimetre side clearance at the small end. And I have heard of this happening. Uh, Chris Steedman in the UK mentioned it once. He would got involved with an engine that, I think it was a 748 SPS that had been 853'd. And someone had just grabbed some pistons and put them in, and the thing just didn't run right. It was fine doing a compression test or a leak down test, but when it was running, it was just a bit odd and it had a lot of blow by. 
and they pulled it down to look at it, and the only thing they could find was the fact that it had a 853 kit piston for a steel rod, not for a titanium rod, because the steel rods are all big end located. And so if they put the the titanium rods from the SPS together with the steel rod piston, the rods could move side to side two millimetres or so. Um, and that was a, an issue when it was running, not so much when it wasn't. Uh, this is an ST3 piston. The funny thing about the ST3 is that it was introduced in 2004 after the 996 had ended production, but they actually used 996 rods in the ST3. So the ST3 unexpectedly uses a big end located piston. And you can see the groove on that one. There's quite a lot of side clearance there. And um, the thing that sort of got me thinking about doing this video now is that I got a, an email last week from a guy who was building a 1026, which is a, a 996 with a 900 SS crank. It's two mil extra stroke, gives you an extra 30 cc's. And he had some Ferrachi 1026 pistons that I have also been involved with years and years ago. And for some reason, the Ferrachi 1026 pistons are a big end located style piston. So they just don't work in a 996. And I don't really understand that.